Hey guys, Kimani Hall here from Hauling This Together. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Okay, so today we'll be making this gluten-free pizza. This is great for persons who are gluten intolerant and also for my celiacs out there. Um, so if you want to know how I made this pizza, then let's do this. Okay, so the first ingredient is potatoes. So I'm using three medium-sized Irish potatoes and I just diced them roughly and I have them in some salted water and I'm just going to cut them. Um, in a bowl that's macro safe, I'm adding quarter cup of Parmesan cheese, some mozzarella cheese, um, and some cheddar cheese. Now, you can switch with switch around the cheeses that you use just make sure that the measurements are somewhat the same. I'm adding a tablespoon of complete seasoning. You can add more or less depending on you know, your taste. This is just to add flavor. You can also switch out the complete seasoning and you can use a mixture of onion and garlic seasoning or you can use Italian seasoning. So I just gave that a mix and I added it to my microwave for 30 seconds and I'm just mixing it until it's somewhat melted. Now, this is important because this Will act as the gluten in our mix so it will give the dough the base that elasticity that we need now I'm using my food processor and I have my dough hook which I just showed you a while ago so it doesn't have any blades so it, you know it's easy to mix you can also use a stand or a hand mixer um, so I added my potatoes and that's the only thing that's in there and I'm just going to mix it you can do this by hand but bear in mind that potato has starch right the more you mix the more the starch comes out so I'm going to show you in a second where this is a little bit more goopy so um, like more starch is released this way as opposed to crushing it by hand so can you see like it is just potatoes, just like you'd make mashed potatoes, but it, the texture is a little bit different. So this one is a little bit more elastic, if that makes sense, because of the method that was used. Now, by this time, my cheese is cooled or, you know, not hot anymore, just warm. So I just added that in a glump. <laughs> I don't think that's a word. So I just added that to my um, potato mix. And I'm just going to mix a little bit longer with my food processor until you know the potato and the cheese is mixed together so that's what it looks like kind of looks like a nasty mess but trust me it tastes great um so i'm just going to mix a little um my socials just came up on the screen if you're not following me on all socials then you can check those out my links will be in the description box um or if you're not yet subscribed then you can do so you can just see my logo or my face in this bottom right hand corner of the screen and you can just click that and subscribe from there also feel free to share this video with somebody who is gluten intolerant or celiac or just somebody who wants to be a little bit healthier now i'm adding an egg that i pre-mixed so like beaten egg um just mixing that in and I'm going to give it another little whiz just to combine all my ingredients. Um, pretty easy, everything comes together in basically one bowl, my mixer or my food processor. That's what it looks like. So I thought it was a little bit runny because you know, the size of your egg will affect this. You can use it as is, but this is an optional ingredient. I added about three tablespoons of cornstarch. As I said, it's optional. It won't necessarily affect the results, but it makes it a little bit easier to handle, you know? So just three teaspoons, tablespoons, sorry, and give it another mix and let it come together. And now, that was me just testing it and tasting it to make sure that it was fine. I was making this for myself because I'm the only gluten intolerant person in my house. So I can taste whatever I want without it being a problem. Um, so now I have my baking tray and I'm spraying it with some nonstick oil and I'm adding parchment. Now, this parchment, I wouldn't add a second time around to be very honest. Um, it kind of made my job a little bit harder. Um, if you add it, then you'll see what happens, but if not, then you can just grease your tray um, better than I just did 
and not use the parchment or you can use foil if that makes it better so now I'm just dumping my my dough mixture well it's more like a, a batter paste something it's not very doughy and I'm spraying some oil on the top of the 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 dough and also on the back of my spoon this just makes it easier for me to smooth it with smooth it out without it sticking to the back of my spoon but this is completely optional you can also use water like can you see how smooth it got when I sprayed it it wasn't like sticking to the back of the spoon I'm just making it a little bit more round um, bake it in your oven preheated oven 350 degrees Fahrenheit for 15 minutes this is just for your dough to be cooked um, yes, I'm baking the dough by itself. Now, right here, um, I have my tomato sauce. This is where I was checking to see if it was sticking to the paper, and I realized that it was lifting. So I'm like, okay, we're good. Funny thing, the middle was not releasing. <laughs> um, that's why I was saying, you know, you don't have to use the the parchment paper because it would have been fine without. I just thought it would have made it easier to. Um, take off it did not I guess the middle part was sweating a little because there was no holes or whatever for ventilation to you know let the steam out um, so now I'm adding some tomato sauce I'm using about half a cup the amount of tomato sauce is really up to you and as you can see from the steam coming from my my tray this is literally directly out of the oven um, so you don't have to wait on it to cool or anything like that just dump your toppings and your sauce and stuff on and you're fine you can leave a little edge for like the crust but you don't have to i chose to now i'm adding some cheese i'm adding i think about a quarter to a half cup of cheese um directly onto my sauce as you saw i literally just used my sauce from out of the can i didn't like pre-cook it or add anything to it or anything like that it's gluten-free and sugar-free so that makes it great um, no additives or anything like that um, so add your sauce and you can add whatever fillings of your choice so right here I'm using some ham and pepperoni mixes um, mixed sorry um, I'm just literally placing it all over and of course I'm overdoing the topping because can you have too much pork on a pizza no you cannot now I'm adding some more cheese on top just to like you know seal in my toppings you don't have to that is completely optional you know the cheese on the bottom should be fine and yes I put pineapples on my pizza so deal with it <laughs> I'm joking but yeah I do like pineapples on my pizza especially when it has pork or ham or anything along well ham is pork you get what I mean now I'm just going to bake the entire thing in my oven again for that was me checking to make sure it's still not sticking pity me and was the middle part stick completely so I just baked it for 10 minutes and this is the final product um, yeah this was actually really great this is the best gluten-free pizza I've had to be very honest um, it didn't even taste like it was healthy <laughs> see that's after it got baked and I realized that, oh it's sticking even more now um, so yeah there's another clipping where I will show you guys after I cut it and I realize that okay I messed up now those are my socials again my Instagram and I don't use TikTok anymore so yeah but it's there if you want to find me um and as i said don't forget to like share comment and subscribe if you like my kind of content i'll be posting more gluten-free and keto recipes if you're interested um i'm also going to be posting some cake recipes and stuff like that so that piece came up quite easy but then i realized that there was paper under the middle part um and because of me trying to fight it to get it off like it wasn't as stable this is the day after however when i was going to have some for breakfast it was way more stable and the middle part was released as you can see and i didn't even have to fight to get it off and it wasn't like breaking apart or whatever so i guess that kind of just gave it some time to you know settle and set up and firm up um so yeah give this recipe a try and let me know how you feel about it don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section so that I can know what you guys like, what you didn't like, and what I need to improve. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you next Saturday with my next video. Until then, stay golden.